Finance Minister Ngozo Nkonjo Iwiali told reporters that the highest global best practices had been used to measure the country's GDP, which is essentially the total value of goods and services produced by a country in a year. Accordingly, Nigeria's per capita income has doubled from $1,555 to $2,689. The service sector, which was undercaptured in the old GDP estimates, led new GDP figures at it all as it almost doubled in size with entertainment and telecost leading the pact. Well, the information provides us much more scope to know what the, the structure of the economy is. As you've seen, there were some sectors that are not even measured in our GDP. For example, the statistician general said that the whole of Nollywood and much of the creative industries was outside our GDP. So how do you now help them very well if you don't know their size or how they are growing. So that information for the creative industries will help us very much because they are growing, they are creating just from almost 0.0 percent, they are now 1.2 percent of GDP, which is significant. This is an absolutely important exercise. I think one thing that's important uh, to us and we contributed data uh, to it is to ensure that information coming out of Nigeria is accurate, um, it's provided timely, um, and uh, it's very easily available. And so it's very, very critical uh, for us that you have this rebasing and that the process was one that no one would question. Uh, of course, uh, it means we need to work harder uh, because the market cap to GDP has immediately dropped with the rebasing. And joining us tonight to dig a little deeper into this rebasing of the GDP for Nigeria is the managing director of Stratlink Africa based in Nairobi, Konstantin Marakova. Stratlink is an international business development company focused on providing strategic and financial advisory services in emerging and frontier markets. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Constantine, Nigeria's rebasing has raised their economy by 89%. What does this now mean for foreign investment? And will Nigeria now be pulling investments away from South Africa? I don't think it will be pu uh, pulling investment from South Africa. If you look at the last two years of foreign direct investment to Nigeria, we're looking at between seven and eight billion dollars. So clearly the, in the segment, the uh, institutional investors have al already seen the trend and will continue to pu uh, put their money into Nigeria. So whether or not it's going to pull money from South Africa, I don't think it will be the case. Uh, I think the markets are extremely different and South Africa has different um, things to offer to institutions investors. Uh, what does a rebased uh, re GDP mean for Nigeria and how and when can Nigerians expect to feel the effects? The rebased GDP basically is a refreshed way of looking at the GDP numbers. Uh, effectively what that means is that the economy is being looked at in a more holistic way uh, and it's a more realistic uh, uh, view and a snapshot of how the country is doing. In terms of uh, how and when the average Nigerian will feel this effect, uh, that will depend on some policies that will be coming, uh, that will, the government will be passing. Uh, the benefit and the drawback is the huge uh, population in Nigeria. You have 168 million people uh, and the government's job will be to properly deal with renewed uh, revenue collection to promote that collection and not only rely on the extractive industries to provide that revenue. The revised GDP data has pushed Nigeria's tax revenues as a percentage of GDP down to 14 percent. Given that this is well below the SSA average of over 20 percent. Do you expect this to spark a more aggressive tax collection strategy outside of oil? Absolutely. I think the government is uh, being quite smart in how they're um, uh, presenting the GDP numbers. Uh, you have the service sector, which is growing uh, and now represents roughly 35 percent of the economy. Uh, and that will be the, the catalyst to uh, future growth. The government understands this and will likely continue to push forward to uh, collect uh, revenue from the service sector. And the flip side of a higher GDP figure is that it implies that Nigeria has more room to borrow, all factors being constant. Would this data enable Nigeria to issue sovereign debt at cheaper rates than before? Uh, I think time will tell if that will be the case. I think fundamentally, uh, from a technical side of things, definitely that will have an impact on cost of borrowing. I think there are some geopolitical factors that uh, will uh, prevent them to fully uh, benefit from uh, this rebasing. 
And lastly, what impact, if any, will this new re-based re GDP uh, economy have on the income inequality gap in the country? Again, I think uh, the government will be the key driver in how the revenue will be utilized and how it will, uh, what factors and which programs will be invested in. Uh, the revenues will increase substantially and it will be up to the government to uh, redistribute and invest into social programs to improve uh, the, in the income gap. All right, thank you for that. That's Konstantin Marikova, the Managing Director of Stratlink Africa.